Good morning in Barosland and good morning in Zambia. This is uh, Madam Sylvia Namangonawa, President for Liberty Democratic Party. This morning I just want to comment on one thing, something that concerns the Manawina royal family. It's a Manawina royal family saga where they are crying foul. There's an article that has come out and they are complaining. They are demanding a share on the ongoing chief selection in Barosland, presiding over the affairs of Barosland. They say that since the demise of their father, Sir Manawina III, they have not been given a chance to preside over the people of Barosland in any of the chiefdoms. There are seven chiefdoms as I see them. There's the Nukuru chiefdom, there's Naliele, there is uh, Nalolo, there is the uh, Kwamashi, there is Mwandi, which is in Sesheke, there's um, Limurunga itself, and there is uh, Leirui. There's Kalabo as well, and Lukuru. So, they are saying they have not been given a chance since the demise of their father to be to rule or to preside over the Lozi people in one of those chiefdoms. And they are accusing the Litunga, or they are suggesting that the Litunga, King Lubosi Imuiko II, that he hates them. Now, that is a strong word. That he hates them because he is not picking from their family, not picking from that clan. Yet their father is the one that the, the, the clan, their father has ruled in Nariele, he ruled in Lealui, he ruled in Mwandi, in, and in Limulunga itself, accusing the BRE, the Baros National Council, of sidelining them and marginalizing them. <laughs> they are comparing that Iuteleta was a better king because he balanced the clans their tribes in accordance to the way they are supposed to rule. I'm talking about the Barossi Royal Establishment for those of you that know it that way or the Barossi National Council. And this is the Manawina clan, the family that the Manawina, Sir Manawina III, the man who signed the Barossi Agreement 1964. He says, they are saying that they should have been given a chance to be picked for the Nariele Palace, where but the, the, the Litunga, the King Lubosi, preferred to put Mlena Akashamba to Ambikusitale Wanika, that side. They said they had a candidate lined up, but their candidate was ditched. They are not enjoying the privileges of being in the chiefdoms. That is what they are suggesting. And they are saying that Nariela was established in 1930 and their father was the first uh, chief, senior chief, to preside over that palace. Now they are talking about Lukulu Palace, where they are saying the young brother of the king, King Lubos II, is the one who is presiding over that palace. But he's being transferred to Mwandi, kind of a promotion the way it is stated. So they are saying, why should he be moved from there to Mwandi? Because they are suggesting that they should be the ones that should be moved to that side. <laughs> they are saying that he is going to pick his... Their, their, their complaint also is that from the Imuiko family, there are already three, which is the king himself, his sister, uh, Mlena Mbuyu, who's in Nalolo, and his young brother, who's uh, Mlena Ananganga, who's in Lukuru. So they are saying they are being sidelined because they are not seeing themselves being part of this cake that is being chowed by the Barosine royal establishment. They continue to say, this is the Manawina clan, the Manawina families from the Sam Manawina III. They continue to say that they have only two sons of the, the late Manawi, Sam Manawina. Only two, Manamulena Mbanga Manawina and Manamulena Inyambo, who is a professor. 
Malawina, that only two sons. And according to inside sources that they are supposed to be the ones that are next in line for the litungaship. But they are not even being picked for senior royalty as chiefs. They are saying their father worked very hard to unite the tribes of Barosland and also worked very hard with the powers that be to sign the Barossa Agreement 1964. Now, what I would like to say to the Manawina clan is this. As I see it, the king, King Lubosi II, he's the one that is sitting there in that chair as king of Barosland, and he has the jurisdiction to pick who he sees fit to be in the royal establishment. The Monana clan are complaining about only two sons remaining. When you look at those two sons, Monamuna Nambanga does not even live in Barosland. He's in Botswana. I don't know where Manamrena Inyambo Manawina is, but definitely he's not in Barosland. Yet there are these ones who are right here in Barosland, like Mlena Aka, Mlena Aka Shambato, because he's the one that has been cited for Naliere. He lives right here in Barosland. I have seen what Mlena Aka has done or is doing for Barosland. I have seen his love for Barosland and for the Barossi people. He calls workshops and calls all the chiefs that are in Barosland, puts them in a workshop for three days. He accommodates them, he feeds them, he gives them money for transport, and he gives them an allowance from his own pocket. In those workshops, he encourages them to not forget the culture, to not forget the traditions, to not forget the power that they hold as the chiefs who are custodians over the land and over the people of Barosland. This has not been information that has been given to me by a second person. I have been in one of those workshops before. He invites speakers from outside Barosland. Speakers from outside Barosland to come and encourage the, 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 the chiefs in our chiefdoms as they preside over us. Now, this is a man who has love, definite love for the Lozi people and definite love for Barosland. He's a man who doesn't go about crying foul, but he does what he can. And when he is appointed to go and be senior chief at Nariele Palace, he, he's fit for the job. He's fit for the job. Immediately he took over Nariele Palace. Look at what he did. He had a cultural festival. That is to bring in people, the lost people, to bring in those people who are in his chiefdom. He's presiding over three districts. Luampa, Kaoma, and the, and the other side, just after the park. Nkema. To bring the people together, he did that festival. To remind us that Kaoma was called the Upangoma. He's reminding us of where we have come from, teaching us the history. This is a man. This is a man who loves Barosland and who loves the Barosland people. He is fit to be in that position. That is the administrative palace of the Baros, or Baros royalty or Baros monarchy. He is fit to be in that job. And to single him out to say he was preferred over their candidate. Which candidate? Which one? The one who is in the Manamrena Mbaga, the one who's in Botswana? The one who's in Botswana, is he seeing how the, the, the lozy people are suffering? Is he seeing how the lozy people are crying foul? All you are doing, the Manawina clan, is you are complaining. Yet, the way I see it, you owe us an apology. You owe us an apology. Because it was Sam Manawina the third. He did it in good faith. He did it in good faith to sign the Barossi Agreement in 1964. But as we come up, when we come as us, the Lozi people, 
when we come up to ask questions on the Barossi Agreement 1964, I don't hear anyone in a clan coming up to give us an answer. Or in support of what we are saying, you are quiet. When these youths, the Youth Alliance of Barossland, they are running around, they are being hunted up and down because they are crying for Barossland, they are crying for their livelihood. They are crying to say, look, the Baros Agreement was signed, but it's not being followed. They are being thrown into cells. I don't see any of, of the Marawina clan coming up to bail them out or to even give them water. You are quiet. Yet, you want to fight over, we are not in the chiefdoms. The king, King Louis II, has his own reasons for not picking you. You are not fit for the job. Maybe you are a weak clan. You know this thing of thinking that because we are supposed to be the next in line, if we are not seeing that even if that clan are next in line, yet we cannot see any one of you that can be the Ritunga. Because look, being the Ritunga is not just about a family. Coming to preside over a people in a chiefdom is not just about your family. It's about the lousy people. Do you care enough for them? You have not said a single word regarding their livelihood, regarding how impoverished they are, regarding the lack of education that is happening now, regarding lack of development which is happening here. You haven't said anything. You are very insensitive. You are only thinking of yourselves. It's no wonder the king is not picking you. You are only thinking of yourselves. You are very insensitive. Very, very insensitive. And you want to attack those who have the hearts of the people, who care for the people of Barosland. We are the people of Barosland. Aruli Aganu. Nganaru Naniona. Lupepiro kwa wa shemi baba tire, vana ni basai vana wa tire, baba wanezi gulozi bo. Mi gulozi ni unaruba takubwena kuli gulozi wazwe la pili. Zeza kuna hananda kulikuti kakuli luzo kwa family ya kuli, luzo kwa mba ya kuli, kwa nakuli kilu na baba ruke ya kuyola. In which world are you living in? <laughs> in which world? The world of today? Things don't work like that. Things don't work like that. If you had organized yourselves to say, look, look at our palaces, they are so dilapidated. Let's pick one palace, work with it, build it as a clan of the Marawinas, then we would have clapped for you. But no, you don't do that. Have you looked at the state of your palaces, even if you are crying for them? Are you going to bring a princess who lives in America to come and preside over Kalawo? Come on. Come on. If you are so far away, it means that you don't love the people here. If you loved the people, you'd have been right here with them. If we had our way, we would have made sure that Mulena Akashamba would have been the next Litunga if we had our way. Because we have seen that he has a heart for the people. He loves Barotland. He loves culture. We also love our culture. We love our king. And we respect our king. But what we don't want is to be ruled or to be led by a weak leader. So when the king is picking, it's his jurisdiction. It's his jurisdiction. Look at Zikubusi Wakibat Baba 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 Sidamata. But Baba Zakuba Saba na Kokafela. The Manarina clan, you owe us an apology. You owe the lousy people an apology because we can clearly say that you sold us out to Zambia. You signed the Barros Agreement, but you have never defended it. You've never said anything about it. You've kept quiet. I am very sure that at the time of the demise of our forefather, Sam Anawina III, he must have said something regarding this Barros Land Agreement. Yet none of you has ever come out to say anything, to defend, or even to give us an answer. Those, these documents, you had them. You knew where they were, but you kept quiet. We can
can clearly also say that you sold us out to Zambia. Can we clearly say that? Because you are accusing the king. So can we also clearly say you sold us out to Zambia and you never defended what you signed? Let the king do his job. We have come in as politicians. I'm a politician and I'm right here in Barosland. And I'm speaking on behalf of the Lozi people. We are not toys to be toyed around with. We are not toys. We are not going to be used as baits to say you have not put us in those villages, in those over that uh, royal establishment, so that we can preside over the Lozi people. We are the Lozi people, and we don't want weak leaders. We want progressive leaders. That is what we want. We have come in as politicians because clearly we have seen that the Barossi Royal Establishment, Barossi National Council needs help. So we are rendering our hand of help to help with the running of the affairs of Barossi land. Politics has to come in and we are here to do it. Thank you for listening and may God bless you.